As chairman, I hope to foster a public conversation about what the Fed is doing to support a strong and resilient economy. And one practical step in doing so is to have a press conference like this after every one of our scheduled FOMC meetings. And we're going to do that beginning in January. That will give us more opportunities to explain our actions and to answer your questions. I want to point out that having twice as many press conferences does not signal, signal anything about the timing or pace of future in, uh, interest rate changes. This change is only about improving communications. My FOMC colleagues and I will also continue to issue our economic projections on the existing quarterly schedule. Now, uh, let me go into more detail over developments in the economy, our economic projections, and our policy decision. Economic growth appears to have picked up in the current quarter, largely reflecting a bounce back in household spending. Business investment continues to grow strongly, and the overall outlook for growth remains favorable. Several factors support this assessment. Fiscal policy is boosting the economy. Ongoing job gains are raising incomes and confidence. Foreign economies continue to expand, and overall financial conditions remain accommodative. These observations are consistent with the projections that committee participants submitted for this meeting. The median projection for the growth of real GDP is 2.8% this year, 2.4% next year, and 2% in 2020. Compared with the projections made in March, this median growth path is little changed. In the labor market, job gains averaged 180,000 per month over the past three months, well above the pace needed in the longer run to provide jobs for new entrants into the work workforce. The unemployment rate declined over the past two months and stood at 3.8% in May, its lowest level in nearly two decades. Meanwhile, the labor force participation rate has been roughly unchanged since late 2013. That is a positive sign, given that the aging of our population is putting downward pressure on the participation rate. And we expect the job market to remain strong. As you can see in our summary of economic projections, the median of committee participants' projections for the unemployment rate stands at 3.6% in the fourth quarter of this year and runs at 3.5% over the next two years, a percentage point below the median estimate of its longer run normal rate. This median path is just a bit lower than that for March. After many years of running below our 2% uh, longer run objective, inflation has recently moved close to that level. Indeed, overall consumer prices, as measured by the price index for personal consumption expenditures, increased 2% over the 12 months ending in April. The core PCE uh, index, which excludes prices of energy and food and tends to be a better indicator of future inflation, rose 1.8% over the same period. As we had expected, inflation moved up as the unusually low readings from last March dropped out of the calculation. The recent inflation data have been encouraging, but after many years of inflation below our objective, we do not want to declare victory. We want to ensure that inflation remains near our symmetric 2% longer run goal on a sustained basis. As we note in our statement of longer run goals and monetary policy strategy, the committee would be concerned if inflation were running persistently above or below our 2% objective. Of course, many factors affect inflation, some temporary and others more lasting. And at any given time, inflation may be above or below 2%. For example, the recent rise in oil prices will likely push inflation somewhat above 2% in coming months. But that transitory development should have little, if any, consequence for inflation over the next few years. The median of participants' projections for inflation runs at 2.1% through 2020. Relative to the March projections, the median inflation projection is a little higher this year and next. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.